welcome. In this session, we will learn one more response of a system. Let's record as sinusoidal response of a system. Uh, this is sometimes referred as sinusoidal steady state response of a system. So sinusoids are often used, often used to characterize a system. So these sinusoids are often used to characterize a uh, system. And this is very, very popular in network theory. And when the input to the system, in the, when the input to the network is uh, sinusoid, the output is referred as a steady series response of the system network. You might have seen this already in the network theory. Now, here our goal is to see if the input is a sinusoid and if the impulse response of the system is given, what is the relationship between the output response and this impulse response when the input is a sinusoid. Now here what we are going to use, we are going to use input as a complex sinusoid. So we say our input is a complex sinusoid and we know this is a Euler's identity and this is G sine omega. So this is the input to the system. So we'll assume that the out input is a complex sinusoid. And let's suppose the impulse response of the system is H of M. So this is the impulse response. Our input is X of M, which is same as E raised to G omega M. And what's the output? So which are, what's the output of this system? So Y of N we know is the convolution between h of n and x of n. So we can write it like this. Say k is running from minus infinity to infinity. h of k, x of n minus k. So substituting value of x of n will have something like this, minus infinity to infinity. h of k will remain as it is. x of k, n minus k, Minus replace n by n minus k here. So it will be n minus k. Now let's uh, this uh, let's uh, so let's separate this into two terms. So this is same as k running from minus infinity to infinity h of k e raised to g omega n e raised to minus j omega. Okay, you can see this system, this summation is independent of this n. So I can take e raised for j omega n outside. And this is h of k e raised for minus j omega k. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, so this is our y of n, this is our y of n. So it's e raised power g omega n multiplied by some from this constant, which is a function of this where h of g omega, which where h of omega is, where h of omega is simply this sum. h of k e raised power minus g omega k. All right, so this is the uh, output of the system whose input it is. So if the input is this, output is the same input multiplied by some this complex number. Now this will be a complex quantity and it won't be a function of time, KRM. It won't be a function of time. Remember, this is not a function of time, but n. But it will be a function of omega only. Remember, this won't be a function of time, it won't be, it will be only function of omega. So what's happening here? When the input to the system is this complex sinusoid whose impulse response is h of n, the output is same response, same input multiplied by some complex number. Now what's this property called? In in Linear algebra, we call it eigenvector property or the eigenfunction property. In system theory, we call it eigenfunction behavior or eigenbehavior of this uh, this system. So when the input is this, 
the output is same input multiplied by this if you remember it from linear algebra a time as some vector is some constant time is the same vector so this is the eigenvector property or eigen behavior in linear algebra same way you can say the input is this the output is the same function same function multiplied by some complex number and this is referred as the eigen property or eigen function behavior of this system so this is the eigen behavior of this system and the input is a complex sinusoid output is the same complex sinusoid multiplied by some complex number and this is referred as the eigen behavior of this system eigen behavior of this system so this gives us the eigen behavior now what's this h of omega that's our main task what is this h of omega here what is this h of omega is k running from minus infinity to infinity h of k e raised from minus omega k and this is referred as the frequency response of this system this is referred as the frequency response of this system frequency response of the system so this is the frequency response of the system whose impulse response is h of k now if you have studied network theory and when you say input to the uh, input to the system input to the, this network is a sinusoid the output response is termed as the frequency response of the network same way in system theory if the input to the system is complex sinusoid the output is referred as the frequency response of the system and this is the frequency response of the system whose impulse response is h of k so this is the frequency response of the system and later on we shall see if we the time this is also the fourier transform of h of k this is actually the fourier transform of actually discrete time fourier transform discrete time fourier transform of h of m this is the discrete time for the transform of h of n this is the discrete time for the transform of h of n h of n is a signal by the way h of n is a signal so for your transform of any sequence x of k means the discrete time for your transform of this x of omega let's say as you can use n or k one and the same thing x of m it is from minus g omega sorry it is from minus minus k omega so this is the fourier transform of x of k so this is the fourier transform this is also a part of the frequency response of the system meaning this gives the frequency behavior and remember it won't be a function of this k or n here it won't be a function of this k means it won't be a function of time it will be function of omega only that we shall see in a little bit when we solve some examples so when the input to the system is a complex sinusoid the output is the same complex sinusoid multiplied by some complex number and that complex number is actually the frequency response of the system so that complex number is the frequency response of the system it's also the fourier transform of h of k or h of n you can say this is the fourier transform of that impulse response and the output is simply the output that's important is the same function not same complex sinusoid multiplied by the fourier transform of the impulse response this is also a for you can in transform in fourier transform you can call it the transfer function of the system so the transfer function multiplied by e to the g omega same input gives you the output and by the way this won't be a function of time this will be a function of frequency only all right let us solve some examples so that we can clarify the concept here. let's suppose the impulse response of the system h of n let's suppose let's take an example h of n is 1 comma 1 let me take a very simple example this is the let's suppose h of n is this so if this is the impulse response of the system compute the the frequency response of the system let's how do we define frequency response we say frequency response is the fourier transform or simply this summation h of k is e from minus g omega k you can use also n there is no restriction you can say also n varies from 
Now you can assume n, this h of n, or h of k is a sequence, so whether you use time indexes n or k, it's immaterial. So you can use either n or k as the time index. Now you can see there are only two sample points here, and that is n equal to zero point and n equal to one. So this sequence has only two non-zero, this has only two non-zero points when n is equal to zero and one. The rest of the sample is a zero. So put n equal to zero, n equal to one, we'll get h of zero, e raised power g omega zero, so this will be zero. And plus h of one, e raised power minus g omega. And this will be e raised power g omega one, and that will be simply e raised minus g omega. Now using the value of h of zero and h of one, we'll have e raised power zero is again one, so this will be one. This will be one plus h of one is one, this will be e raised power minus j omega. All right, so this is equal to this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use, I'm going to take e raised power j omega by two outside, minus two outside, and if I take this outside, it will be e raised power j omega 2 plus e raised power minus j omega by 2. You can check this is all right. So when you take this inside, this will be e raised power j omega by 2 minus e raised power j omega by 2. That will be e raised power 0 and that's equal to 1. And if you, when you multiply e raised power j omega by 2 with this, it will be simply e raised power minus g omega. So this is okay. Now next what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this by two and divide this by two to make it to relate something. Now you can see we know from complex numbers, so this is h of omega, h of omega. So this will be twice e raised power minus j omega by two. Here you can see this bracket part is simply sine. It's sine of cos. I think it is cos. Is it sine or cos? It is cos, yes, it is cos. So this is cos, cos of omega by two. Now have a look at this h of omega. Is there n anywhere or k anywhere appearing in this equation? There is no n or k in this expression. So this is independent of this term. That's why this is only a function of omega. So this is a function of omega only. Omega. Only. And this is a complex number. Now, if you plot this, if you plot the frequency response, so this is the frequency response of the system. This is the frequency behavior of the system. Remember, this is the frequency behavior of the system. If you plot the magnitude of this, and if you take the magnitude of this, it's taking more on both sides. So this will be twice e raised to minus j omega by two cos omega by two. All right, now we know magnitude of AB is same as magnitude of A, magnitude of B. So this will be magnitude of twice e raised to the minus g omega by two, magnitude of cos omega by two. So this is equal to, it will be this. Let me take two outside. So this will be, Okay, so this is equal to, now we know magnitude of e raised power j theta or minus plus or minus j theta is equal to one. How? Because e raised power j theta is simply cos theta plus or minus j sine theta, depending upon whether here we have minus or plus, this is under root of cos super theta plus sine super theta, you can see cos Plus one, so, that's equal to one. so this term is equal to one, so this will be twice cos omega by two. So the magnitude response of the system is magnitude response of the system is cos omega by two. Now if we plot this frequency response, if we plot this 
with respect to omega. Now remember, here I'm going to make a statement. We have done that. We'll do that in uh, sampling term. Once we study sampling term, the maximum discrete frequency is pi. Means the discrete time frequency of the, the discrete frequency varies. Omega will vary from minus pi, pi to plus. Means the maximum frequency can be minus can vary from minus pi to plus pi. So if we want to see the frequency response of this, let's plot it from uh, zero to this uh, pi. Let's plot it from. So let's do it for positive side. It will be the same thing for negative side, right? Negative values of omega. So if we say the maximum value of omega is pi by pi. Now when omega is zero, when omega is zero, the value of this function is, if the omega is zero, value of this will be two times one, that's equal to two. Same, same way, if the omega is pi now, the value of this signal will be simply, the value of this will be twice cos of, this will be cos pi by two, cos pi by two is zero, so this is zero. So if pi is the highest frequency and zero is a low frequency, what is going on in this system? It allows the gain for zero frequency is two, but the gain for frequency means gain of the system when the frequency is pi is zero. So what is going on? It is allowing the low frequency, means the zero frequency to pass, but rejecting the high, higher frequency. So, so this is being some kind of a low pass filter. It's allowing the lower frequency zero, means when omega equal to zero means low frequency. So this is low frequency. Similarly, omega is equal to pi. I said highest frequency that you can have in this time is pi. So if this is the highest frequency, you can say this is high frequency. See what is going on, what is the system doing? It is allowing, it is providing a gain for low frequency that's equal to and the gain, this means gain, h of omega means the gain, h of omega means the gain provided by the system. So you can see the gain of the system or the frequency response of the system is zero when omega is equal to pi. So at omega equal to zero means low frequencies, the gain is two, but at omega equal to pi means high frequency, the gain is zero, means it is not allowing the high frequency to work. So this is behind some kind of a low pass filter. So this is some kind of a low pass filter. So the gain when omega is zero is two, but as you increase the frequency, the gain decreases and it will be like this. So this is true when omega is zero. Same is true when for negative frequency. So you can repeat this for negative frequency because there is the cause has no impact with negative values. So this is the frequency response of this. This is the frequency response of the system. You can see it allows the lower frequencies to pass. It allows these low frequencies to pass and reject it as we go up, as we go up and up, it, the gain of the system decreases. If you plot this in MATLAB, you will see the answer yourself that this decreases, the gain decreases as you increase the frequency. Plot it in the MATLAB, <coughs> take values of this omega from zero to pi, or from minus pi to pi, we'll see if this will be the frequency response of this system. So this is the frequency response of the Fourier transform of this system. Same way, let's take one more example. Let's take one more example. Let's suppose impulse response of the system is now one minus one. So this is the impulse response of the system. Now, how do you define or write the frequency response of the, what job is to write the frequency response of the system? K minus K omega K. Now, again, you can see there are only two non-zero values of h of n, so you can say this k is varying from zero to one. h of k is one omega k. You can use n also, n or k are one and the same thing. You just replace the n by k in the subarmula. So this will be h of zero, it is from zero, h of one, it is from minus g omega one. Now h of zero is one, e to the power zero is one, so this will be simply one. h of one is minus one. You can check it's minus one, so it will be minus e to the power 
minus j omega. So this is the frequency response of this system whose impulse response is this. Now you can see this is not a function of time. This is not the function of time. So this is not the function of time. Now let's similar change with this. Do some manipulation of this expression. So I can again write it as e raised to minus j omega by two. E raised to j omega by two minus e raised to minus two. And if I multiply by two, divided by two, it will be the same. Now, if you are able to recognize the bracket part, this is simply the sine omega by two because sorry, we should be k also. K also. Be 2g sine theta is equal to e raised to j theta minus e to minus j theta divided by 2g. So this is how we relate this. So instead of theta, we have omega by 2. So this will be simply 2g e raised to minus j omega by 2. So this is the frequency response of the system. This has both phase as well as magnitude. Now let's see the magnitude here. What is the magnitude of this? So what can be the magnitude of this to be more on both sides? So this is 2g e raised to j by 2 sine omega by 2. And taking more on both sides. Again using the property of mod a b minus mod of a b is same as mod a mod b. So this will be 2 a raised to minus j by 2. So again, this is the two. The magnitude of J is one. The magnitude of this whole quantity will be equal to one. So this is two times. How this is equal to one, by the way? How difficult? You can write it is this J pi by two is same as J. You can check it. This is J. So you can write it j as e raised to j pi by two, e raised to minus j omega by two, this is sine omega by two, and this is two, e raised to j pi by two minus omega by two, sine omega by two. We just saw e raised to j theta magnitude is equal to one. Theta is equal to pi by two minus omega by two. So this is again, this will be again equal to one. So the magnitude response will be twice, sine omega by two. And this is the magnitude response of the system. Now, again, if we plot this, if we plot this on the, with respect to omega, you can see this is our magnitude response. Now I said zero is the lowest frequency, Pi is the maximum frequency and minus pi, let's repeat it for minus values also. When omega is zero, this, when omega is zero, this is h of zero, so this will be two times sine zero is zero, so this is zero. So what's going on here? When omega is zero minus, when omega is zero, this simply means low frequency, low frequency. So it's not allowing low, lower frequencies to pass. The, and pi is the highest frequency. In this discrete term, pi is the highest frequency. We shall learn this in sampling term. So this is two times sine. This will be sine pi by two. So this will be sine pi by two. When omega is pi, this will be sine pi by two. Sine pi by two is one. So this will be two. So when omega is pi, it means high frequencies. The gain is two. So this is allowing the higher frequencies to pass, but rejecting the lower frequencies. So what's going on? This is behaving some kind of a high pass filter. This is behaving some kind of a high pass filter. So the rest frequency response of this is like this. This looks something like frequency response of this looks something like this. You can plot it yourself and check the frequency response looks something like. In the same way, it will be true for negative values. And we are taking the magnitude here. As we are taking the magnitude here, so it will look something like this. So this is the frequency response of this system. You can check it yourself and verify. In my class, plot it from minus pi to pi, and this will be the response of the system. So this is the frequency response of this 
system. So you can see that if you remember, I said in the first lecture, if this is the response. This is the impulse response of the system. The system behaves as a low pass filter. This behaves as a high pass filter. So this is very simple example of this filter from frequency domain. So this is the frequency response of the system. In short, remember one first thing that you should remember is when you when the input to that system is complex sinusoid or simply sinusoid, this impulse response is H of n. The output of the system is the same input multiplied by some complex quantity. This is referred as the frequency response of the system. This is termed as the eigenbehavior. Termed as eigenbehavior of the system. And what's H of omega? H of omega is given as something like this. Here we become minus to infinity. H of k here is from minus j omega k. And you can also write it and don't confuse that here, everything will change here. This is one and the same thing. So this is the frequency response. Frequency response of the system whose impulse response is H of N. Uh, this is also referred as Fourier transform. Discrete time Fourier transform of H of N. This is also referred as the discrete time Fourier transform of H of N. All right, let me end it here. Solid some examples. Yourself.